This is a video or um, a series of video clips of some parts that I've made. Um, these were made while I was employed at Onimac Industries. And uh, so what I'm going to do is just start on the left end. Looks like I've got uh, seven parts here and I just work my way over. Uh, so hopefully this comes out okay. Uh, fair warning, I'm a, better, I'm a better programmer than I am a movie maker. So uh, here we go. Okay, this part here uh, was made out of steel. This is an aluminum setup part. Um, it was made out of 4340 uh, hardened steel, if I remember right. Um, we roughed it out uh, and left excess prior to heat treat and then finished uh, after heat treat. It was done on a four axis machine. And it is, if I remember right, it's a 737 flap track guide. Um, so uh, anyhow, I know that's not really all that important, but uh, uh, let's see. Some things that were tricky about this part. Um, underneath here I used a, if I remember right, about a three inch wheel cutter, about a half inch wide on a one inch arbor and cleaned out as much of that material as I can, finished and finished um, these walls as much as I could and then I came back um, on the fourth axis and stitched out the remaining with a ball nose to blend with the wheel cutter. Um, by far the trickiest thing about this part is, I don't know if you can see it or not, but these holes right here are in line and they're actually pretty tight tolerance and they sit back behind this flange here. So you can't, you don't have a straight shot in line on it. And what I ended up doing was I used a lollipop type of cutter, okay, that had, it was a spherical ball on the end of it that necked down in, into a, a smaller neck uh, on the shank. And I stitched out this on the fourth axis at some angle, reoriented the part, and then stitched out the other side so it came out in line. And uh, okay, on to the next part. This is the best example I have for some 3D machining. Um, all of these surfaces all in here with these ribs and everything uh, were all 3D'd out. It might be, you, know, you can kind of see how, how the, the shape of the, the profile is there. Um, the trickiest thing about this part were these spot faces back here, these back spot faces. Um, I had to come in and roll it up on the fourth axis and 3D out that spot face with a ball nose uh, to get this thickness dimension and uh, did those uh, did those we got four on each ear um, all right this part here started on the CNC lathes and then it came over to the mills and uh, so it was up to me to program all these and by the way um, I programmed all of these and I drew up all of the models from prints. I wasn't lucky enough to get any um, any uh, models or any wireframe or anything like that. It all started from prints. I'm guessing all of these parts are were probably designed in the 60s and 70s, um, which is typical of what I did there at Onimax. So anyhow, um, a neat thing about this part is, uh, well, there's a spherical feature in the bottom of that that cut out there and I stitched that with a half inch ball nose. Um, the trickiest thing about this part was this middle area uh, getting cut out and not leaving all that much material in there um, to lend uh, rigidity to the part um, and it ended up being plenty rigid and it, it worked just fine. So, that's how this part here is some kind of bell crank um, the trickiest thing about this was this thin clevis. Um, I used a about a 187 wide wheel cutter, um, 8 inch diameter, and I think the RPM that that worked out to with this being steel was, um, you know, 100 RPM or less, and uh, it had to get put on a special machine that had enough torque to turn that wheel cutter. Um, this little raised area here is 3D and it's tapped uh, through there, through that raised area. And that's it. 
This part here was started on the legs. Uh, this is another four axe part. Um, so this ID was turned, which uh, I used to locate off of. I made a um, an expanding mandrel type fixture to grab onto that. And uh, so I made that whole fixture myself, if I remember right. A um, lot of 3D and went on with this one. Um, this whole back leg here I had to get 3D'd. Um, the touchiest tolerance on this part were these these holes that are on these two legs here. And um, they were dimensioned, the locations were dimensioned off of this face and this hole here. Um, so it, I had to orient it and locate it real tight and then come up with a way to check it to make sure it was right before the guy ran it uh, to make sure everything would come out good. All right. All right. This part was it was pretty fun. Um, it was uh, done on the fourth axis. It was a fair amount of 3D and going on. Uh, the trickiest thing about this part was figuring out how to grab onto it and and tool it. And I think uh, what I did, if I remember right, was I made a pocket and some soft jaws on the vise, which had this profile in it. So this sat down inside the pocket and. Uh, left the rest of the sticking up so I could move it back and forth on the on the four axis. Um, can't really tell but this clevis here is at a real small angle. You can, you know, it's kind of hard to see with this camera. But anyway, so it's at a real small angle. The tolerances on this clevis were uh, like plus or minus five and these through holes here were pretty tight tolerance on uh, location and, and diameter. Um, you can see this kind of deep pocket there. And uh, that window cut out. Okay, this is the last part I got. Uh, this is also a four axis part, and like the rest of them, started on a, as a print, and I had to develop all the models and everything um, wireframe surfaces. Um, I think all of these parts were done in version 9 Mastercam, so I was. Uh, I was doing all that back in version 9, which I think was just getting into solids. Um, so the 3Ding that I did, I had to develop the surfaces. But I got pretty good at it after all the parts that I'd done. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's nothing super special about this. There's, you know, this, this got 3D'd out here. Um, the trickiest part about this was this boss here and this face were the datum features. So I had to tool off of those. Uh, so everything else could, uh, you know, so the, the dimensions could come in um, as necessary. So, and that's it, Terry. So I'll get this off to you and try to figure out how I'm going to get the file size down to a manageable size. And uh, talk to you soon.